Albers, Director of Middle School Education for Scanton County School District. And I'm Paul Fetzer, School Board Member for District 2, which is the district that the mayor serves as the presiding judge. United States Credit Bureau Manager for Social Communications. Jason Ward, Public Affairs Officer for Indiana Prince Paul. And I'm Corrine Sivogod, School Liaison for Indiana Prince Paul. We don't know where the Director of Starbase Prince Paul Health is. Tim Ball, MDR Director, NAF Prince Paul. Well, it's Jonathan Runge, Deputy Director of Starbase. Thank you, members. Thank you, Jeff, for coming today. For those of you that have been with us for several meetings, or those of you that are joining us for your first, our mission is to improve educational services and communication between the Scandia County School District and the Lower Perry County District. This council was suspended up about a year ago, and it was established as a partnership between the Scandia County School District and the Maple Ridge Area District Co-op. Last spring, when this council was dismissed, it could facilitate necessary changes in policies and procedures that directly impact educational services for the children of our service community. And members of the public are always welcome to submit questions. We're also taking questions via Facebook Live. Oh, yeah, we're not on Facebook this time. We're on YouTube. But we're always taking questions via various social media. You can submit those questions, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with those questions. You can direct your questions to Pensacola PAO at gmail.com. That's Pensacola PAO, the public affairs officer at gmail.com. So for the first agenda item, I'd like to hopefully everyone will take a chance to review the February 17, 2022 meeting minutes. And do we have a motion to accept those minutes? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Now we'll move on to our next agenda item, where we will highlight our initiatives, programs, and resources. And I will turn the floor over to my co-chair, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Commander. Well, the first thing that we've been sharing each time we get together is just our COVID protocol. And I'm happy to say that COVID is, as you know, our numbers reflect that of the community. And so our COVID instances are really, really way down. In terms of our protocol for the fourth nine weeks, we really mirror what we were doing the third nine weeks. And really the only thing we were limiting and still have been limiting is professional development opportunities that schools can do about the classroom. So we have been limiting that. Thank you. 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 Th
uh, had our meeting on that Thursday, and uh, uh, I'm grateful that we have our uh, director of Starbase Pensacola here. I'll turn the floor over to her. Uh, you know, just let us know, uh, you know, a little bit about Starbase, uh, what's been happening, and what we can look forward to this summer. And I know that there's some summer programs I was just talking to you about. There are. Um, I made a slide presentation. I didn't really know if we needed one or not, but we can go through that. Yes, kind of does. I'll go through it real quick. I won't. I won't ponder on anything. But um, next slide. There we go. That's a little history of Starbase, where Starbase originated, came from. Uh, we had a second grade teacher that taught the uh, area in, uh, she was in Michigan at the Air National Guard base, and she thought that the second grader, she was a second grade teacher, needed something uh, uh, more <coughs> than just the regular school. So she came up with this idea, presented it, uh, stood on the floor of Congress begging for them to fund it, and uh, in 1993, seven uh, sites were put up, and um, one of those being Oklahoma, which that's where I'm from, um, launched and uh, is still in existence today. And now in Florida, Starbase Pensacola became the third, one, third site, and then Orlando came in right behind us. So there's four sites there. Uh, Starbase Pensacola exists, uh, we have six staff, and it consists of myself, my deputy director, and uh, two certified instructors, and two insistent instructors, and they all have, uh, there's two separate classes going. Um, and wonderful school system of Scambia County School District has uh, been sending us students uh, since March 1st. When we end on March on May 17th, um, and the kids have been enjoying it, they don't want to go home, but we have to send them back. Um, we have three academic classrooms per class, so that we the National Flight Academy is where we're located. So we're, we've taken two CAGs, which is the Carrier Air Group, uh, and we've put one classroom will exist in these three classes, and one classroom will go to these. So they come in. Uh, they have a ready room, they go in, um, they uh, are briefed their mission for the day, which is uh, really ex the curriculum, what they're going to do that day. Uh, they may go into the research lab or the, the uh, JIC, which is the intelligence center, and that's where they're going to do all their hands-on experiments and, and activities in there. And then for uh, three hours of, <coughs> of the five hours that they're there that day, um, they, they may go into uh, the CAD lab, which is the jock, and that's the operations center, and they go in and do a computer-aided design for um, part of their curriculum. A typical day, they'll arrive, they're greeted by the instructors uh, in flight suits, and they proceed to the second floor where the CAGs are, CAGs one and two, and then they'll have their briefing. Days three and four, they spend time in the jock, like I said, uh, and then they do their computer-aided design. The day five, they uh, will finish the curriculum, all 25 hours, and graduate. And how they, how they attend Starbase is that two classes will come like on Monday. So the next five Mondays, they will be, be attending uh, Starbase. And then we have two more classes that come on Tuesday, two, more, two different classes on um, Wednesday, so on and so forth. So we end up with 10 classes uh, per week, or for the five, for the five, five weeks. Next slide. This is the, you can't hardly see it, but uh, this is the curriculum schedule. I'm pretty strict on staying with that. DOD requires each class that comes, they must have the 25 hours in order to call it a class and to be counted toward our numbers. But, so they're pretty busy. They don't have much time to, uh, to get into any trouble, and they, are, they have been very active in, in, into it. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty extensive. Uh, they cover math. Uh, a lot of our uh, on-hands that we do is around the engineering design process. We'll talk about that versus the scientific method. So uh, those are two different things, but they're two important things. Uh, they study physics, uh, we do Egbert, 
uh, if you have known anybody that's been in the Starbase Atlantis years ago on the base, they did Egbert then, Egbert's still going strong with the kids and that will be one thing that they remember uh, out of the out of five weeks. Um, they do, they'll do uh, chemistry, they do chromatography. The teachers were telling me today that when they do the chromatography, they get all excited about that. They're really into CSI. So mm -hmm. we might have some, you know, some, uh, some people that, some youngsters that will grow into uh, detectives one day. And um, we, and of course the CAD, they go in the CAD, uh, their first day they uh, have got a mission that they have these graphic novels that we have and it's on shape is the program that they are doing and they go in and they try to find on this on this aircraft there's been a mishap and everything's everywhere so they've got to go in in a scavenger hunt <coughs> and collect all those things and they've got a list of things that they go down and they can they have to I mean it's not and it's not easy Jonathan can can verify that you know I mean it but the kids will get in there and they're like, oh yeah there it is and so they they don't have any issues whatsoever they're, they've been brought up on it so they're they're like yeah this is it then they go into a, um, the diver, they do a repair on, uh, using the CAD program, a repair on the breathing apparatus, and then they do a gyrosphere, and then a part of that uh, three hours is for them to discover. So they make something that they could use uh, in the future. So that's, that's part of that. So they're pretty busy. Next slide. Um, these are the schools so far that we have ha we've had to uh, visit us, and they've brought some sweet kids, uh, energetic kids, uh, and uh, engaging. They they kind of test out some of our instructors, so it was pretty pretty. They, the instructors would come back down, and go, wow, they were asking questions, they were learning, you know. So I mean, it's good. Um, we've had all differing, uh, you know, abilities in uh, their learning, so that's good. Uh, we don't. You know, we, we want everyone, so it's not, we don't want to say, well, you're, you can't come because of this. We want everyone to, to come in and do the experience. So those schools have been our first schools, and we've been very lucky to have them. Next slide. So I took the graph, I took the, um, I took the numbers of the two, because I already had the demographics and everything. So uh, in all, we've got 367 uh, cadets have come through uh, as when we finish up in May and uh, we've got a lot of you know we have some ESL ELL uh, some with I, I, IEPs so like I said we cover everything and, and uh, the the interesting thing is that of the 367 kids that we had only 17 were military dependents <coughs> I thought that'd be a little bit higher but not We'll see. So uh, anyway, next slide. <coughs> this is just a little, a little uh, <coughs> talk of just our basic program. We are, we are Starbase 1.0. So DOD considers us level one. There's three levels you can go for. Um, I came from a level three in Oklahoma. I had four sites. Uh, and they went six days. So a six day was a career day. All they did was they they went through the base and went through different sections on uh, the base and had career speakers and everything like that. That was a full day. That moves them up to level three. Um, I'm striving to be a level two pretty soon with my experience and everything. I think that I can get Pensacola to get there a little faster than what the normal Starbase 1.0 is. Um, and if I can keep Mr. O'Toole you know, liking me and everything will be good. But um, our basic program targets the fifth graders, but Title X uh, has given us authorization to do K through 12. So we can do any program out in the community or um, you know, with organizations of any grade K through 12. So we, have, you know, we, we can adjust, uh, do different things with the kids and get all of those grade levels, which that would be great too. I'm, I'm for that. Uh, the community outreach is a big, uh, moves us up to a level two where we do Starbase 2.0 and that's where we will be asking middle school uh, principals if they would be interested in hosting a Starbase 2.0 after school club 
and we come to the schools. It has to be in the school, and uh, one of like one of the instructors would be uh, bring the activity, bring all everything that they need. The school doesn't have to provide anything other than a place and a sponsor, a teacher, to meet at the clubs uh, two hours, two times a month throughout the school year, um, and it's it proves to be a a fun thing because that's that one. You, in our fifth grade program, there's a curriculum we have to follow. In the uh, 2.0 program, that's where it gets fun because the teacher and the Starbase instructors can collaborate and do something fun. We did uh, rocketry. We've done uh, sea perch, which they, the kids had to uh, be given a, some uh, items and they make a, uh, a it was kind of, I, I guess you'd call it an apparatus that would go down into the pool. We had a, we were lucky that we had one side that was at a pool, and um, it would go down into the pool and retrieve, and that was part. And there's a contest that's uh, throughout the United States. It's a sea perch contest, of uh, the kids can go and and they build these and then they bring them and see if you know they can retrieve all the, the things that have been thrown in the pool. So it's pretty cool. But I mean, that's the thing that we're striving for is to get to the level two. And so we want to make level one look as great as it can be so it can move us up to level two. But we have, uh, we're also looking this summer to go out into the, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, sisters, uh, big brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and move out into those areas because we can go out into the, to those organizations and provide a STEM day if they want a week. We can provide a STEM week for them during the summertime. So, that's something that we're looking forward to doing too. Also, on the next slide, um, we'll be providing summer academies uh, or camps at the at uh, NFA, at the Flight Academy, on base, and then we're looking at Whiting Field and do those in June. Those will be mili for military dependents age 10 to 12 years, so you're rising fourth mm -hmm. to, to sixth grade. Um, DOD, wants us to do at least two camps that go that give back to the military and this is our way of doing that is giving is putting the, the camps military dependents um, provide summer academies to community youth organizations in the community during the summer and uh, the attaining uh, a level two status and these are just our goals for the at least the next year two years we should be at level two if not sooner and future expansion uh, in 23-24 with another classroom, if NFA will uh, oblige us with that. They, they, they gave us a little, uh, you know, tisk back and forth that we stole those, but I don't think I did. Uh, and addition, additional third classroom, and then incl start including the Santa Rosa School District. Uh, our first priority is to get all the fifth graders I was given direction to give all the fifth graders through the uh, program, and then that's my that's my first goal of doing that, and then we'll move over to Santa Rosa because we've been already been contacted by them. I guess the the word got out. I don't know. Uh, and then increasing our partnerships on and off base uh, in our community outreach. So we provide STEM nights. Uh, Jonathan and I have already judged a few science fairs in the schools, and so. It's not only that we, we take things for the kids, but we also want to help the teachers and, and the staff and everything at, at their STEM nights and, and uh, anything that we can oblige them with that, we're, we're there for them. So it's a whole entire picture. Next slide. Questions? I have a question. I know, um, and I could probably talk to you offline about this, but STEM NOLA has contacted me in regards to summer camp. Are you, do you work close to the No. Okay. We, I'll we talk, talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. But thank, thank you for the opportunity. I sure. appreciate it coming here. Thank you, Rita. I've heard uh, great things from uh, a lot of the kids mm -hmm. going through a lot of the comments. So they're mm -hmm. very cautious when they get there, and then they don't want to leave on day five. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, exactly. so good news. Uh, next up on our agenda, I'll turn the floor over to the principal of our host school here at Brown Barge Middle School, uh, Mr. Joe Snyder. Thank you. Appreciate everyone being here today. We just, uh, I guess the timing is great for having this here because we just wrapped up a very successful month of 
for the military child here at Brown Barge. But I'd like to think that we help the military child 12 months out of the year here at Brown Barge. Particularly, I want to touch base on a couple military grants that we have running, one right now and one we'll pick up and start next year. The first one's called Project Afterburner, where we have about 10 percent, a little over 10 percent of our <coughs> students are currently being uh, impacted by this military grant by means of a running club and a culinary club. So we've been able to have students stay after school and come before school and enjoy our brand new track that was purchased and built by the half cent sales tax. So thank you for that. And our culinary club where we had about 45 students the first time we offered the club about three weeks ago stayed after school and one of our uh, our IT person actually is a used to be a chef or I guess he still is a chef and so the wow. it's amazing what what hmm. uh, the students are already cooking and baking so I'm really excited about the project afterburner we also have a DOD foreign languages grant that we has enabled us to offer a Japanese and I'm not going to go into how different brown barges in the other middle schools because that's not the platform here but we have encore classes that think of that as our elective courses and we're going to be able to offer Japanese as a foreign language for next year for our students to a uh, preference to be able to take we have a sister city that unfortunately because of COVID we haven't continued the uh, host families tradition that unfortunately came to an end but we're hoping to get that back and I feel like this will be a great avenue to do do that as well so we have a high percentage of students at Brown Barge are from military families. We have a great relationship with the MFLAC, Ms. Robertson and Ms. Bragosh, I know is out here quite often. So uh, it is the military child, I feel like, is thriving here at Brown Barge. And uh, that's about all I have. So thank you. And thank you for hosting us. Oh, of really course. Anytime. It. Uh, it's uh, great to get out. and. Uh, you know, with, uh, with COVID on the wane, getting to go and uh, perform this meeting at different schools. Uh, next up, I'll uh, we'll, uh, shift over to Dr. Roberts and uh, Mr. Holland for uh, see what uh, Scambia County School District has for summer programming <coughs> this year. Joel, if you will, I'll start first. That sounds great. Okay, good, good. First of all, I'm Michael Roberts, Director of Middle Schools for Scambia County School District. Summer school we will have for all levels. As Mr. Marcanio stated earlier, at the elementary level, it will be at designated sites. Each middle school, each high school, except for this middle school, Brown Barge, will offer summer school for all students. All core areas will be offered, reading, writing, math, those things that kids must have in order to be promoted. We're looking at hundreds upon hundreds of kids being in summer school. It will run June, the month of June, Monday through Thursday, all day each day. And uh, we're currently in the process now of hiring teachers and uh, getting kids enrolled in summer school. It will be open to those kids who need the credit recovery, kids who have failed whatever course it is. And uh, we're encouraging those kids to attend summer school. Uh, middle school no longer requires a 2.0 to be promoted to the ninth grade from eighth grade but there are mandatory courses that they must pass. So those kids that have failed will be the top kids that will be targeted and invited, for lack of a better word, to attend summer school with the understanding in order to be promoted. And if you need this course, that opportunity will be offered to you in summer school. We will have uh, also in Washington, they're offering a summer program for swimmers. Uh, for the kids throughout the district. There are other things that Mr. Holland will, will share with you that uh, we will be offering for students during summer. But as far as the academic opportunities, summer school will be offered at all levels to include pre-K, to include the pre-K students. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. You're welcome, sir. Uh, along those lines of pre-K, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Title I office in our school district which handles the voluntary pre-K programs that we offer at our uh, um, Title I elementary school zones. Uh, so essentially, if you reside in a school zone of a Title I school, you are eligible for uh, totally free uh, 
voluntary pre-kindergarten DPK uh, for your student at, at one of those Title I schools. Um, transportation is provided. Um, so is breakfast and lunch. I forgot to say that. You, they will have breakfast and lunch as well. Yes. And um, it is a, the, the program, uh, it only serves school districts or school zones that are Title I school zones, and, and not all of our elementary schools are Title I school zones. Uh, if military families or any family moves into a school zone that's not a Title I school zone, that doesn't mean that they can't find a voluntary pre kindergarten <coughs> provider. It's just that our district is not the provider of those voluntary pre kindergarten services. Uh, there's lots of private providers, for instance, that uh, if the family's interested and they're not in one of those zones that we serve, um, then they can reach out to the Early Learning Coalition um, to uh, try to connect with a program uh, provider that is not a school district provider. Um, there's also a Head Start program. Um, and technically, Head Start is not affiliated with VPK, but uh, similar as far as giving the students a leg up before, prior to entering uh, kindergarten. There is a link for those who want efficient information. There's a link on the state's website that lists all the eligible VPKs in our area. And also at title1.org, that's title and then just the number one, org.org, .org. Uh, there's links to that info as well. Um, Title I also asked me to mention a program called Ready Kids that was formerly known as eCare. They have a program called Ready Rosie. It's an online site that's geared towards equipping the parents with ways to engage their children with developmentally appropriate learning activities and strategies that those parents can employ at home. Essentially, they are the teacher engaging those students in those activities at home. Uh, that, that curriculum's completely free. Uh, and it's available in Spanish and English. For those uh, things that I had mentioned in your packet, for those of y'all who are present, there's uh, several sheets that you got. Uh, one of those is the Ready Rosie, and then one is the Summer VPK. If you uh, know of an entity that would like this information, there are additional copies on the table back there uh, that you can grab on your way out. And if you need an electronic resource, reach out to me and I'll be happy to, to send you the links um, to, to these these flyers and more information. And I'm happy to connect you with Kim Edmonds, who is the assistant director in our Title I office, who was kind enough to give me the rundown on these types of programs. In addition to that, I don't know if Mr. Marcanio is going to share this and if I'm getting in the wrong lane, just blow your horn and I'll swerve back over. <laughs> the, uh, this summer we will have a district-wide reading summer program for all levels in which books will be provided to the students and that's a big plus mm -hmm. that's a big plus and i appreciate you uh, mentioning that were you going to say something well I, I just wanted in the past my recollection is that that vpk is for four-year-olds and a head start you could be as young as three oh, okay. so, so that, that i believe now i again that's a few years back since i retired but as I remember it, Head Start took three year olds and BPK you have to be four. Great. In, in regards to the reading program, that I, I do appreciate Dr. Roberts mentioning that. So we are using <coughs> ESSER dollars and the board approved the purchase of books for students. And so at the end of the year, students will receive two to four free <coughs> books to take home and they'll, and they'll, be, they'll get to pick them out. Um, and then, um, if a student is participating in a summer program, they'll get up to two or two to four more free books to go home. And our, our media specialists will be doing activities over the summer to connect to students and engage them in activities associated with the uh, summer program. So it's our first year doing that, but uh, Dr. Smith has made it clear that he wants us to do things that provide opportunities for students to stay engaged in reading over the summer, so I um, appreciate you bringing that up, sure. Dr. Ross. Sure. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, our culinary club will be helping with that this summer, doing our book, uh, burgers for books, so kind of tying in the culinary kits too, so they'll be preparing things for our burgers for books events. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, our next presenter is 
the MWR director at NAS Pensacola, uh, newly on board, a couple months, uh, in the ground running, and he will cover uh, summer programming on board NAS Pensacola. Thanks for having me. As I stated, I'm Tim Ball. I'm the uh, Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Director. Our mission is to provide uh, our active duty members and their families with leisure activities and programs uh, and skill classes for uh, the majority of the year. Uh, specifically for the summer for our children, we're going to be running uh, a variety of NBR and child and youth programs. I'll let Carissa handle the child and youth side. But for MWR, we, uh, we're going to start with uh, aquatics, summer camps, and lessons. Um, this is everything from sailing, junior lifeguarding, kayaking, paddleboarding, um, sports classes, water safety classes, puddle jumpers for the little kids, um, and diving. Uh, our aquatics program also offers uh, private <coughs> and group swim lessons from uh, six months through adult, and that happens year-round. But we're going to be uh, really pushing it through the summer whenever kids and adults are in the water the most. Uh, our fitness program is running a free run, play, move class for six weeks. Uh, this class is comprised of energetic workouts led by MWR instructors and coaches, uh, but it also features lectures and all the activities are focused towards growth, positive mindset, confidence, nutrition, respect for others and yourself, and positive views of self and kindness. So uh, that is a program that we're going to be kicking off in the uh, next couple weeks, and it will run throughout the summer a few days a week. Um, our golf shop is offering golf lessons. Uh, we run two programs um, for children six to eight. Uh, it's called Fundamentals, uh, emphasis on the fun part of it, uh, where they go out and they practice once a week together, and then they play around once a week as well at a discounted rate. And then uh, children ages nine through 13 have the option to be part of our PGA Junior League, which actually is a traveling league, so it goes around to other golf courses and competes against other teams. <coughs> Um, at our library on base, which we have a full uh, library concept, uh, it's one of the largest in the Navy, uh, we're offering story time and summer reading throughout the summer. Um, the theme this year is Read Beyond the Beaten Path, um, and it's going to run from June 6th through July 22nd for our summer reading program. And then we do story time, which is very popular, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and it averages about 50 military children uh, and, their, and their moms or dads attending those classes or those story times. And finally, we have pop-up play dates. Um, these are run by our community recreation department. They are spread out um, across the installation, but <coughs> primarily held at our ski beach recreational area. Um, and that's the second and fourth Thursday of every month from 10 to 12. And those are very popular as well. As long as it's nice, we have a large group of uh, kids out there. So uh, if you got any questions, you can see me after, or I can take them now. It's not a question, but it's a comment. <coughs> I think you have the best job <laughs> in the business of fun. I tell you what, yeah, no, that's very impressive. Thank you, Tim. Um, and uh, earlier, as Principal Snyder said, we just wrapped up the month of the military child, and I'll turn the floor over to Ms. Kristen Bergosh to kind of uh, uh, wrap that up. Okay, great. Well, um, I'm, I'm up there with Tim. I think I have a fun job, too. I get to help celebrate the month of the military child and throughout the year, too. But I see several purple around this room, so thank you. I guess you got the memo, right? <laughs> there wasn't a memo. I didn't send anything out. It just happened to be. But um, I have a presentation because, of course, a lot of the information I have is more pictures. So I want you to be able to experience it. So go ahead to the next slide. Okay, I um, want to go over the history of the Method Military Child. Now, I know there's a lot of information on there, but I'll let you look for a president. See if you can find a president. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ronald Reagan was president when Method Military Child was first celebrated. Casper uh, Weinberger, our former Secretary of Defense, and I uh, wanted to recognize April as the month of military child, and you see Reagan had put this into proclamation, I guess, if you want to say. And then Governor DeSantis also signed, and I know you cannot read the proclamation, but I just wanted to put that up there. And then, of course, the, our school district, your, your schools, thank you very much. You um, recognize the month of military child. Okay, next <coughs> slide. Okay, I want to go ahead a little bit over what we did on the installation. The most, I guess the biggest 
thing, opportunity for our child and youth programs was the Easter extravaganza on April 9th. That was a great day for our families to come out. We had different ages. We ages from, I think, um, 6 to 12 or something like that that were able to um, hunt Easter eggs and participate in Easter fun activities. But this was our first year. We had the first hour separated for our EFMP families, our exceptionally family member program. And that was an, um, a great time for those children to come out to experience the fun of Easter in a more subdued setting. So it was really a fantastic time. Okay, then the next area is our Child Development Center, both at NAS and at Cory Station. And I was unable to put the PDF into the PowerPoint, but I want to go over a little bit about some of the activities that our youth center did. Um, and I'm just going to highlight one or two things. I'm not going to talk a lot. Um, um, one of the things they did and it, on April 29th, they said, take me out to the ball game. And this was the day that all of our youth got to come out to play kickball with the, the teachers. And they got to enjoy free hot dogs. So of course, kids love that. They get to play and enjoy <coughs> food at the same time. Um, some of our, our little guys at this Child Development Center got to experience and eat some snow cones. And all that fun stuff. So they got to experience some crafts, make crafts with their families. Mine just all over the place. Okay, uh, if we go to the the youth sports at the very bottom, the uh, we are going to be focusing on track and field this summer and inviting our families to come out and enjoy that that um, sports. Um, with COVID, we are our, we're trying to focus our emphasis on one sport this summer. Okay, next slide. Okay, and this is the what some of the pictures of activities that we hosted in the school. And if I can get you to just click on the link, and hopefully it'll work. I hope it works. <laughs> if not, I can't sing and dance. There you go. And just click through. Okay, Brown Barge Middle School. They put that number one. <laughs> These are some of the fun activities. You can tell the electronic sign. I don't know if you can read that. The month of the military child, and I think that was yeah, up all cool. month, wasn't it, Joe? It was. It was, okay. They got to experience a lot of purple. Okay, go ahead. And this are some more Brown Barge Middle School. See, these are pictures displayed throughout the school. Next slide. And this is at Tate High School. Tate High School. Our military students need to talk. And they did an awesome job. I'm sorry? Uh, we got alumni. Oh, so I know. I am too. <laughs> okay, and there's some more purple donuts. And, and I want you to notice all the signs. The children made the signs at Tate High School. In fact, didn't do it. Children did. So they did a good job. A lot of artists. Okay. Okay, Beale the Middle School. This was displayed in the school. El the elementary school in Beale. Some certificates, and thank you notes. And some of the thank you notes were given to the kids. Beale Elementary School. Some of the activities they did during the week. I think. Um, Brown Bar did some of the same things, red, yeah. white, and blue, camo day. Mm -hmm. Okay, go to the next slide. Some more donuts. I see a theme. <laughs> and Helen Caro. That's their quarter deck, yes. And I would like to invite you to that school as well. Look at the outside area with the bench and just a quiet place for <coughs> families to congregate. Very nice. And Bailey Middle School. And they made purple bracelets for all the students. 
Yeah, it's really neat. I think the the Builders Club helped make those bracelets. And for those of y'all that don't know, that's around 1,300 students served. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And be cut more donuts. Kids loved them. And Pleasant Grove. I think that's it. And the last slide. There you go. And that's my information. And notice the new email, <coughs> the long email address. <laughs> wow. Yes, uh, the uh, Navy is uh, changing mm -hmm. over to Microsoft Flank Speed, so we all get these very, very long email addresses. Uh, I'm still trying to learn mine. <laughs> I always forget the, the uh, middle letter. Um, yeah. My middle initial in there. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not working out too well. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. And uh, turn the floor over to Mr. Chris McFarland for school choice. Good evening. So, um, we have concluded our lottery season for the three magnet schools, Cook, Brown Barge, and West Florida. Um, but we are still taking requests for all of our other schools that are not yet at capacity so families still have the opportunity to make some choices of where they would like to go next year um, those applications are on our website um, at the last school board meeting uh, the board did approve um, our department name being changed and so school choice is now called enrollment services so when you go to the website on that families tab um, you'll now see where you're actually going to click is enrollment services and not school choice um, when you're applying for those schools. And we're putting a lot of messaging out um, to make families aware of that change, that um, our department name is changing, none of our policies have changed, none of our programs have changed. Uh, just the name has changed just based on how we've evolved over the year and we're providing full enrollment services to parents. Um, so we're going to start planning our school choice expo for the fall and so we will once again start up again in october and we will have a full open enrollment season october through december for high school and middle school and in the first of the year we'll have uh, open enrollment for our elementary schools and that's really all that's happening in school choice right now <laughs> Thank you, Commander. I'd, I'd like to comment, um, make one more comment about um, we have a partnership, another partnership with the Naval Aviation Museum and NAS. It's called the Flight Adventure Deck. And there's been some public conversation lately about that. So I just would like to um, go on record here to say that, uh, it, that we are committed to that partnership um, and reaffirm our commitment to using that resource. Um, this is an opportunity for middle school students and uh, in both the Scambia County and Santa Rosa County take advantage of the program where middle school students go out to the Naval Avi Aviation Museum for a day and learn about the science and the math associated with flight. And we've been doing this program since um, 1996 actually. Um, we've had some challenges this year like everybody has with COVID <coughs> um, and, and employee shortages and uh, things of that sort. So I just want you to know that we will, uh, we're committed to using that resource and taking full advantage of getting our students out there and that's what we're going to work towards to improve that for next year. And Mr. Fetzko, I don't know if you want to add anything to that? No, I, I just, uh, I know it's been in existence a long time and, and there was the attendance problem this past year for transportation reasons and because of our inability to send teachers and staff we couldn't get enough subs to watch classes if, if teachers left and it, it was one thing after another and it became very difficult. Um, part of the thing is that the, the scheduling when we've had to uh, go to a three tier transportation routes and in fact we had most of our staff within transportation driving routes and so there was just no way we were, we were there was no window of opportunity within the day 
routes were going from 8 in the morning till 10.30 in the morning. So by the time they got there to try to take a bus from there to NAS and back to the schools in time to start dismissal at 1.30 or 2 o'clock, it, it just was so compact it was not feasible to do that. Uh, not an excuse, it's just the, the state of the, the, the nation. That's what we're working with yeah, uh, and, and, these days. And we will do everything in, in the future to make sure that our students have the ability. All three of my sons, while they were in middle school, went to the Flight Adventure Deck and loved every minute of it. I also visited on multiple occasions and wanted to stay and play all day. That's <laughs> <laughs> why they even went to Starbase. <laughs> I'll go back at any point. <laughs> but. Uh, you know that, that's a big thing. The partnerships that the that the school district has had with the military community and, and Naval Air Station Pensacola has been a a real plus for for our students. And we would never want to do anything that would stop that or jeopardize that. And want to you know commit to doing things in the future. I know that we've had some conversation, and I don't know. I don't stay involved at the day to day level, uh, and that's not part of my role. But you know. Uh, our flight academies at, at Bailey Middle and Scambia High School, the connection there, we need to strengthen those and have the real tie-in because we have a lot of resources and, and things that can be used and those connections then feeding into those programs through the students who visit Starbase and Flight Adventure Deck, you know, it, it's a win-win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Thank you. Everything is more difficult and a lot more expensive these days, <laughs> yes. uh, no matter you know uh, what you're involved in. So, uh, Jonathan, are there any Flight Adventure Deck summer programs? Uh, so, um, and I was the director with Flight Adventure Deck from uh, 2015 to uh, 2020. I'm not anymore, but there are, uh, and I know that Escambia is planning on sending uh, 60 uh, children this summer to Flight Adventure Deck. Uh, over a three-week period, I think 20 children and, and providing transportation, which is super cool. And I know Flight Adventure Deck is, is really excited about that. And that's a really neat, unique, hands-on camp. Uh, the kids are uh, flying in the flight simulators. They're going to the giant screen uh, theater. They're getting exposed to naval aviation history. They're learning about the fundamentals of flight. Uh, they're building an Estes rocket and taking it out and launching it on the parade field. So it's just one cool activity after the next. So I know in addition to those uh, three weeks, I think there's a fourth week, so there's a month of camp available uh, through Flight Adventure Deck, and most of it's uh, filled right now uh, by the Stanby School District. So, great. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have, uh, that wraps up uh, our uh, uh, current programs right now and what's going on during the summer. Uh, we have one pre-submitted question. If you'd like, I'll go ahead and read that. and. Uh, We'll have our uh, subject matter experts uh, answer that. So, uh, our military connected freshmen is at West Florida High School this year. We also have two seventh graders in our household. We have heard that the seventh graders will automatically be accepted into West Florida High when they go in, uh, go to ninth grade. How does that work? So, they wouldn't be automatically accepted. They would have to meet the eligibility criteria. However, we do have a sibling preference built within the lottery. So when the students are in the fall of their eighth grade year, they will apply and their grades, discipline, and attendance will be reviewed. So as long as they're eligible and they have an older sibling already enrolled at the school, they will receive the sibling preference and be selected within the lottery. Thank you. And uh, just to add a little nuance, it gets so in the weeds, but it's important to note because I've fielded a lot of phone calls about this, uh, it's not just because they have an older brother or sister at the school when they apply. The purpose of the sibling preference is so that you don't have two kids in the same level of schooling, like two high schoolers that end up not going to the same high school. We want to avoid that. So if the kid's eligible and they apply, and that older sibling is also going to be there the following year, right. then those are all the technicalities about the sibling preference. And like Chris Which, mentioned, that the student, the student the younger student applying does have to meet the eligibility criteria. Which this scenario they would because yes. they, yes. they're two years apart. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we Thank typically you. don't have any issues with that. The issue is with them not applying. They have to apply to get the preference. Yep. Um, so they want to make sure that during that October to December controlled open enrollment period, they have submitted their application. 
Thank you. Jason, Joel, any more qu questions? I don't have any. <clears throat> uh, no more submitted, but I have a personal question. I've got a, a daughter who's graduating senior this year, and I've got a daughter who's a ninth grader. Um, and we have taken advantage of um, Florida virtual school options in the summertime for our children uh, to accelerate them. Like, for instance, um, one of my daughters wanted to have one more space in her schedule for the upcoming regular school year uh, so she could take an elective that was only offered during the school year. And so she chose to take a, a required course um, during the summertime so that she could have a free elective space. Um, and I know that. Uh, I have another student who took driver's ed during the summer, um, and I, I have not had to enroll a child in summer school in a couple years, and so I was just wondering, does the collective have some guidance on how a family might choose to tap into a Florida virtual school for, for summer school, whether it's for enrichment or for an elective? Yes, that, it's available through both Escambia Virtual Academy and Florida Virtual School. Escambia Virtual just sent out to all the schools all the courses that would be available through their program. And so certainly if the student is wanting a Florida virtual course that's not available through the Escambia virtual program, they would have the option to sign up for that. As we've talked about before, the advantage of taking the course with Escambia virtual is it's in-house. You get a local teacher, you get local support. We have a full staff to help the family. But if there is a Florida virtual course that we're not offering, that is available. If the student goes to one of our public schools, that has to be approved by their guidance counselor. So they just need to work with the school and the guidance counselor to get approved for whichever course they're wanting to take. Thank you. And since you mentioned driver's ed, yeah, there you go. <laughs> thank you. Yes, sir. So, um, you know, when we sent our summer school document to the board, we uh, planned on having that at two locations Washington High School and Tate High School. Well, due to staffing shortages, again, um, finding teachers that have that driver's ed endorsement to teach that, we will only be offering that at Tate High School. And so that is a change that we've had to make, again, because we can't find teachers to work at both of those sites. So, thank okay. you. So for all of uh, all the Escambia County School Districts, uh, I guess families can go onto your website to get all the information uh, uh, for the summer summer programming and summer schooling. Is that correct? Sir? Yes, okay. sir. Uh, I'll go through my team. And one more plug for where uh, where people can find the information on the Flight Adventure Deck. Uh, so the Na uh, Naval Aviation Museum uh, Foundation website has links where people can go on and sign up for the National Flight Academy. Uh, as but uh, probably tomorrow the next day uh, so we'll, we'll be pushing out our starbase registration for those weeks and also for flight adventure deck so it's all all housed on the foundation education website okay excellent and Tim where can they find your information Navy MWR Pensacola .com or on our app which is also Navy MWR Pensacola okay and Jason where can they submit the questions if, uh, for the next meeting you can always submit a question to Pensacola PAO that's PAOs and public affairs officer at gmail.com We're ready to move on to next year's meetings. Yep. Well, um, thank you, sir. So we've been having quarterly meetings, as you know. Um, I would like to propose that we continue that unless there's any um, suggestions to do anything more or less. So let's uh, I, have a talk about that. I personally think that the amount of meetings, the quarterly, and also the timing within the, the year worked out really well this mm -hmm. past year. So, I, uh, I agree. You know, we were able to cover the before school, the two meetings during the school, and now we're wrapping it up, moving into right. the summer program. So uh, I was really happy with, uh, with our uh, timing. Okay. So if I might then, um, w why don't you allow myself and, and uh, Mr. Holland to take a look at what our calendar meetings were like for this year and pick those same weekdays and, and so forth in the calendar for next year mm -hmm. and or do we want to do that right now? I mean, uh, are you prepared uh, to do that now? Oh, sure, sure. Okay, well we can do it right now. Yeah. Okay. We'll propose, take notes and uh, yeah. everyone okay. can go home and have a little homework and uh, look okay. at their work calendars <laughs> and uh, see how everything fits in. Yeah, sure. <laughs>
Um, Ms. Marcanio, I would like to ask that if the fall meeting could be at Washington on the night of the School Choice Expo, the mm -hmm. time aligns well with that because the expo starts at 6 p.m. Oh, um, and so yes. we can work with you to have come up with whatever date will work for the committee but I'd like to have the fall meeting at the Washington Media Center right before the school choice expo. All right. Yeah. That's so a good idea. when did we do our first meeting in the fall, Joel? Can you tell me? Uh, we did have a July meeting. So I understand that that's not fall, right. but uh, that was the, the well, first meeting. And then meeting. October 22nd, I believe, last year was uh might have been the 21st or the 22nd. It was uh, first of the school year. So October 20th is the third Thursday in October. And when did you say the expo was? It could, it could be then. Could be then. It's usually at the end of October or the beginning of November. So we just need to check the availability of Washington High School because we do take over the school <laughs> for an entire day. Um, you don't hear about that. <laughs> for 14 years. <laughs> he said yes. Dr. Roberts knows all about that. All right, so these dates are tentative, but let's okay. throw some dates out. So that would be our second meeting. When, uh, so it, was it the third Thursday in July for our first meeting, Mr. Holland? Yes, sir. So that would be July 21st. And then our our third meeting is in January, is that correct? February? Yes, it was February 17th this year. Okay, so the 16th, so 2-16-23. What was the October date, Mr. Marquinhos? 10 20 Thank you. October 20th. Thank you. Okay, February 2-16-23, and then... Um, you wait till you get my age. Mm, this Those is the first every day. Thursday in May, <laughs> so the first Thursday in May would be May 4th next year. May the 4th be with you. Yep. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are the proposed dates, again, following the same format. Um, and we said we would check on Washington High School uh, for that second meeting. Um, do we want to talk about a potential location for the July meeting now? Any ideas on that? Well, I don't know that it would be advantageous to have it uh, on location at a school district. True, uh, true. Uh, location, because I mean, it's the summertime. True. Okay. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the O Club yeah, at some point, but I know that's all contingent on COVID. Uh, we can do, the, the issue is the, uh, uh, the, 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 the access, to the ac access yeah. and our audiovisual <coughs> capabilities there. Yeah, we, we, we do not have the audiovisual capabilities like you have. Kind of, kind of when we went to the Sunshine format, right. that's when we kind of lost the ability to host it in-house in on base mm -hmm. because we're not able to, to grant one the public access and we have very limited audiovisual capabilities sure. for the uh, uh, for the Facebook Live and the uh, and the and the YouTube versions. So, all right. Well, do we want to do we want to look at um, Room 160 like we've done in the past in, so always work in July? Well. We want to check the calendar, right. Mr. Marcanio, because there are a lot of trainings over the summer in that room. But I can get that information we, for you. So again, we we we'll, we'll check that and we'll confirm. Uh, so. <coughs> We've got those four dates. We'll check for and confirm room 160 for the July 21st meeting as well as the Washington meeting on 1020. Um, and uh, so Mr. Holland can put out a communication once we know that for sure, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, start time, 4 o'clock still work for everybody? Perfect. Very good. That was easy. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. Do you want to do closing remarks? Closing remarks? Take us home. Oh, well, okay. Take us home. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Um, You're doing great. Well, there you go. All right. Well, I would, uh, first of all, I just want to thank everybody. This, is, this has really turned into a great opportunity for us to keep the communication lines open, improve them, and uh, just work collaboratively. So I hope you all agree that um, this, this is a great effort and it's important. Um, so um, 
I, I know I, I know um, I think our district is better for it as well as the way we um, are communicating um, information to our military connected families so um, and then with that I will just uh, I would remind people that um, our school calendars are on the district website so we have um, you know we have the calendar not just for next year but for the next three or four years um, I will tell you that um, for next year um, when we were working on that calendar we noticed that Santa Rosa County's spring break was not aligned with ours um, and we always try to make sure that that happens we pointed that out to Santa Rosa County and um, they have since adjusted theirs so that those spring breaks are are aligned um, all bets are off for the year after next because uh, you know but it's really you know we, we hope Santa Rosa will look at ours that are adopted and and uh, mirror that and then I'll just say that um, I know everybody's aware of this the last day for students is May 23rd 4th. 4th. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong calendar. We know that we'll date. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that date. 23rd is fine. We'll do the 23rd of Brown Park. So we are, <laughs> You'll we are like, kids. That's what we you are heard, three right? Weeks, uh, three weeks away. Um, and then our graduation ceremonies will take place the 25th and the 26th at the Bay Center. So, um, I've, I've got a question, and I don't know, Commander, who the best person may be, Ms. Bergosh. I, uh, has there been any feedback from military families saying, hey, we really like that you're doing this and, and we tune in, we watch it, and we're able to get you know, things a, a better understanding? Because the communication of the families is what mm -hmm. this, this whole council, the, the main purpose. And, and if there was some way that, um, I don't know, when they check out, when they moved or, or being relocated, to, a question to say, hey, did you find this helpful? You know, um, I've actually received a couple emails from okay. people and just asking questions and saying, "Hey, we saw y'all. We heard Good. about this. We like it." Good. So awesome. Uh, so so a couple a uh, couple individuals on base have have reached out and and, and noticed that we are doing this. Good. That's good. You know, the, the more that we could get the information to the people who need it in a timely manner and one that they understand and know that they could ask the questions and get them answered, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. I've also received just a couple of emails, but um, I do send out a welcome aboard letter. What I could do is I could put a small blurb. I mean, it's like three, four pages now, but put a small blurb about this meeting at the council you put and the dates now do you know the dates for next yes year? i could put the dates down and right. just so then they had that information so if they need to refer back to it and yeah and put uh, his info where they can submit questions right okay i could do that awesome and maybe and maybe the link to our military families website i have that on there yes you already have it Hmm? I bet you already have Yeah, that. I have that and I have Joelle's name and contact number and <laughs> everything. <laughs> I got uh, one more thing. Uh, you know, th thank you for a great year for this council, but uh, I'd be uh, remiss if we didn't uh, give a round of applause to our audiovisual team back there. Oh, yeah. that <laughs> thank you guys. I, I truly appreciate it. And with that, uh, the uh, last meeting for uh, this school year uh, is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please grab some snacks on the way out.